They don't fool with the time. They let the time alone. And, and there's a lot of people that just don't uh, do a lot of things that other people do. So you need to worry. You may look around and say, where are they? Well, listen, God's done. And he told Elijah, he said, there is 7,000. I've got 7,000 that has not found the news today. Praise God. You're not the only one. But God's got a people. He'll always have a people. And we need to worry about it. So, well, where are they? Here we are. We're just a little people, you know. But listen, God's got little peoples all over. Praise right. God. And they're true blue. I believe it. I believe God has got a people. And they're just as true to Him as oh, yes. you want to find. Praise the Lord. Any work. And we'll have to uh, stay uh, with God to be with them. Praise right. God. I believe God's got them, don't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, today I, and the other day I was thinking about Glenda. I want to give her uh, a few roses tonight. Praise the Lord. A uh, little girl that my hands touched her first. Praise God. But you know what I'm thrilled about, Glenda, that you're here tonight. In the house of God. Serving the Lord. And I was telling Sister uh, White the other day, I said, do you know that that girl is a miracle? Mm -hmm. And you people that don't know it, when you look at that girl, you just remember you are looking at a miracle. That's right. Because she was brought to that parsonage out there when you need to say, well, uh, you know, they might have thought the car had run over. But listen, the prince of the tar right. across her stomach. Right. And she was a bloody little girl. And listen, she, she was married so flat that when she was brought, that she could not get a deep breath. That's right, Sister Guthrie was holding her. And she could not get a deep breath because the breath had been dragged out of her. But listen, and her daddy was going around that building out there. And he was going around there, and he didn't even want us to waste no time praying. He was going to get her to the doctor. But listen, her her mother and her grandmother wanted to have prayer for her. And the dad did not come in the house until after a while. But do you know that God healed her? God healed her in the kitchen. He healed her in the kitchen. And she raised up and asked for food. Praise the Lord. And he got down in front of him. But God done a miracle for him. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Right out there. Amen. And I'll tell you, I appreciate her living for God. Amen. Serving him and being here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because God spared her life. Amen. And when you see her up here singing or whatever she's doing in the house of the Lord, you remember you're looking at a miracle. You're looking at somebody that God spared. Amen. Praise God. Her mother backed over her, and then here it is. She put it in here and come right back over her again. So she was run over twice. And so listen, the prince of the tires was on her stomach, and the hide was off of her stomach. So she was married to Blake. And uh, God done America. And I appreciate her. And I appreciate what she has done for this church. Praise the Lord. And uh, the other night, you know, uh, when she is prayed for, she wants to be a soul winner. And that's what she's going to be. Praise the Lord. She's already won some souls, but she wants to win some more. Praise God. And I believe God's going to let her win some souls. Praise the Lord. Because listen, we got something to do, and I believe you can find something to do in the house of the Lord. That's right. Praise His name. Right. So I just wanted to say that for her because, uh, you know, sometimes uh, people need a rose once in a while. Right. Praise the Lord. And sometimes God is calling for a will. 
A lot of times I've needed a witness. I couldn't say nothing myself. I couldn't say nothing. I, c I couldn't even speak for myself. But I'd say, God, I want a witness. And if you don't witness for me, I don't want a witness. And God would send a, a person that didn't even know nothing about it, and they would be my witness. And so God can give you a witness when you need one. Praise the Lord. You don't have to go out and hire you one like, like some of the deceitful people in the Bible. You don't have to go out and hire you no witnesses. But listen, if you have lived for God and if you have served Him and if you have put your heart in His business, praise the Lord, and whatever you've done, you've done it with your heart and your mind. Listen, God or send you a witness. Right. Give you a witness. Praise the Lord. All right? Now, it seems like what the Lord laid on my heart tonight uh, should be some other time. But I'm just going to stick with what the Lord laid on my heart. Praise the Lord. Right. And it's, uh, it's found in the book of Ruth. <laughs> and no doubt most of you are acquainted with it. Because there was a famine going on in the land of Bethlehem, Judah. And uh, there was a certain man there that went down, went to sur sojourn in the country of Moab. He and his wife and his two sons. See, there was a famine going on. And the name of the man was Elimah. Now, I may not say these words right. And the name of his wife was Naomi. And the name of his two sons was Molar and Chilla or something. I'm just calling them names. I don't know if I'm pronouncing them right. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and they came, and I agree with him. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Now, I don't know exactly how long they stayed there, but this man, Naomi's husband, he died. And she was left with her two sons, the Bible says. And then they took wives of the women of Moab. And one of them's name was Ophrah. And the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelt there about ten years. Now, I don't know if that means that they dwelt there ten years after those boys got their, uh, these Moab women, or if they had stayed there a while, you know, before then. In other words, her husband died, and she was left with two sons, and then they got wife, and then it seemed like the way it reads that they stayed there ten years after that. But finally, these sons of Naomi, they died also. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. In other words, they all died. And there she was left. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law. She had two. And that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Mo had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. So she heard that things were going on pretty good, so she wanted to go back home. But the sad part about it, she had went too far and she had stayed too long. All right, that is the whole story of it. How far it was, I don't know, but anyway, it was too far for her. And then she had stayed too long. Because later on in the story, it says, she said it herself, I went away full, but I came back in. So that is the sad part about it. And, and uh, I was thinking about people that go too far in the path of sin. Amen. And they stay too long. That's a, and right. when they come back, they don't have nothing. 
going to do. That's just the rules and regulations. Right. Yeah. So you're going to abide by them, girl. You're going through for God. Praise God. And then when the storms come, you say, that's all right. Because I'm going through the storm. Right. Say, so, well, what about the earthquakes? Well, I'm going to go through the earthquake. Yeah. Because it's only going to be good to me. <laughs> what what it good to Paul? Right. Well, the earthquake didn't bother him. Right. You know what it done? It was good for him. It just loosed him from the, uh, the bonds that was holding it. Right. Praise God. The stopping bonds. The right. thing that was holding his feet. It just loosed him. Things that bother other people, they shouldn't bother you in Because we should have joy in this people and full of joy right. And there will be more joy than there will be sorrow. Sure, you're going to have some sorrow. You're going to have a day of trouble. But the Bible's already told you what to do when that day of trouble comes. So right. call on me. Amen. That's what he said. Right. He said, call upon me in the day of your trouble. And he already told you what he'd do. He said, I will deliver thee. That's right. right. And then he told you what you better do. You better glorify me. Amen. 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 Right. So it's just a uh, <laughs> nice little verse in the Bible, but it's good enough for you and me. It, it tells us just what to do. Right. First of all, it tells us we're going to have a day of trouble. Amen. Oh, I said, well, I ain't had no day of trouble yet. Well, listen, you right. got it coming to you. Yeah, right. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to have a day of trouble. You're going to have a day of trouble. The Bible says, call on me in that day. Right. I already told you what to do. So what am I going to do, Brother Dunkey? What am I going to do? I have nothing but trouble. Well, listen, God's word already told you. Say, call on me. That's right. That's right. So what I call on Well, call on him some more. That's well, right. I call And God said, I will. Now that's possible. That's right. I will deliver them. He said, well, God, you haven't done it yet. Well, all right, God. You said, I will. <laughs> well, give me time. I will. <laughs> he didn't say when. That's right. So you just got to keep on knocking. Amen. Keep on leaving because after a while, it's coming. That's right. And some people do not stay with God long enough for God to deliver. That's right. When God gets ready to deliver and do something for them, they're way off their yard somewhere. One time when we was having church in that little old bitty hall out there, there was a girl come to me. Her husband was running around, and, uh, and she was coming to church. She didn't have the Holy Ghost, but I believe God was knocking in her heart stole. Right. And she come to me and she said, Sister Daniel said, how long did you have to wait for Brother Daniel to get the Holy Ghost? And I said, almost five years. And she liked to have me. She just glowed up. She said, never would I wait for my husband that long. I said, well, I'm not telling you you'll have to wait that long. I said, I didn't have nobody to encourage me. And I said, uh, well, I'll encourage you. <laughs> and maybe you won't have to wait that long. That's right. And did you know, let me tell you how it come out. See, time tells everything, don't it? That's right. All right. She left him. She wasn't going to put up his food. And she left him. And she went to another state back in her feet. And so he went on. And, and they both, you know, got all mixed up and everything. And you know, when five years come about, I saw that man bow on his knee and crying and talking to God. And I counted up, and it was five years. Five years. Now, it didn't have to be that long. But anyway, God, now I don't know why it happened that way. But when I counted up, it had been five years. And see, if she'd have hung on in there, things would be different. Right now, they'd be different. But a lot of people don't hang on in there. Right, they right. will not. They will not hang on Stay in there. Right. But listen, 
and they'll not see the goodness of the Lord. If you don't hang on in there, you won't uh, see. You the Bible go. says you won't see when the good comes. Right. Right. She went too far. She stayed too long, and she said, "The Almighty 
has dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord has brought me home again. Yeah. But I've come, and I've come.
and they have their baked sweet potatoes in heaven. So, so that man had power with God. His sinner brother told all about it. But listen, that man, you know, he, he was a poor man, had a big family and everything. And jobs are wonderful. Jobs are wonderful. But when they take you away from God, they are not wonderful. Right. And the powder plant opened up in Miles, And men and women was getting jobs. They were just running up there to get jobs, men and women. Just like the shipyards out here, men and women was running to California to get work in the shipyards, you know, back in wartime. Men and women. And uh, I suppose them men got to patting them women on the shoulder and saying, I would be nicer to you than your old man. And, and maybe the old man, you know, kind of fussed on her and made her feel bad and everything because she had a bunch of kids and she was trying to get them taken care of and everything and she was fixing herself up to go off to this new job, you know. And so that's the way it is. Men and women working together, you know, and, and uh, maybe she come in and feel, now I'm just saying maybe. Maybe she come in and, and she said, well, my old man was mad this morning when I left. And somebody heard it. And that man, you know, he, he walks over and he says, what did he get mad at you? About? What did he say to you? And she just spills off the shelf. He said, well, I'd never treat you that way. <laughs> I would never treat you that way. Now listen, it has happened, I believe. Amen. I believe it's happened. And anyway, they was a, a woman that was a, a homeless woman, but she had a daughter that had facts with her. And she started working at the power, power plant, too. And so... These two people got together and he said, well, uh, your mother is a homeless woman. She said, yeah, and I heard you had the Holy Ghost too. And so they got to talking and to one another, got real friendly. And first thing you know, they got in love, they thought, with each other. And so he, he left his wife and all those children for this backslid of the girl and he was backslid of course and so they got together and so he tried to get this girl to go to his house and just live there with him and his wife and children and so he talked her in the ocean to drown and so she went up there you know and she was going to come in and, uh, and so this woman, she just got her cheer. <laughs> she says, you ain't about to come to me or for me and my children. You are not living here. And so the man, he was there and he, now this backslidden man that had one time had power with God. You wouldn't think that you'd go that far, but if you miss God and get away from him, you'll do things that you never dreamed that you would. Right, so and so he told this girl, he said, don't let her scare you. Go on in there. This is my house. So he wasn't going to put his hands on the wall. She, she did the wall on him. So he got to do it, right? But he was insisting that this woman do something. And I said, why don't let her scare you? Go on in there. We're, this is my house and you can live here just like we live here. And that woman, she draws back then. Jerry, she said, you come in here and I'll <laughs> I'll let you have it. And that girl was here and she wouldn't try that. She didn't she didn't go no further. She went back to the car and said, You'll you'll have to get me a place somewhere else. But listen, that man, anybody that's ever had the Holy Ghost, do you know there's something about it? They know it's real. And he couldn't help but go around them old brush arms. He couldn't stay away from them, Ken Revival. And you know what? He'd drive his car up, brother, him and that woman, and they'd sit in the car and listen to the song and, and hear the preaching and all that. 
And then one night when my husband was preaching about Samson, he, he ventured out of the car. And he come and he got a hold of the old hymn poem. And God was knocking at his heart's door. Even though that he'd done God like he had, God was knocking at his heart's door. And he was a hold of the old hymn poem. And tears was running off his face. Because he knew what it was like to serve God. That's right. He knew what it was to get a blessing. And he knew it was real and God had used it. And he, he had had power with God. And so Daddy went over and talked to him. And he told Daddy, he said, I mean to get right with God. I really do. I mean to get right with God. But said, I'm not ready right now. Daddy talked to him. And went on. All right, that wasn't the last time he got dealt with. He went to a church in our hometown. <coughs> they didn't have a floor in this new church. They just had salt it up. And there was a little girl that was used of the Lord. And she said, gone now. And she went back to where he was sitting. He, he come to church, folks. He come to church. Because God had him to come back. Because God was going to give him one more warning. And so he was sitting back there and he was praying. This little girl was speaking in tongues. She went back where he was. She bowed before him. And there in the sawdust she made a little cry. She formed up, you know, the sawdust. And he was there with the tears running off his face. And he said, I know that's for me. And I need to get right. I'm going to get right. Folks, he had good intentions. But he didn't do nothing about it. And it wasn't long after that he bought a new pickup. And it wasn't long after that till uh, when his wife went home, this woman that he married, she went home and she waited for him to come and he didn't show up right away. And so she was going back to see about it. There was some black people that was uh, pushing an old car that they were trying to get it started down the highway. They was pushing. And they heard this new pickup humming. And it was just getting dusty off. And I mean, he was coming at a high speed. This new pickup was just a humming. And they listened. And he wasn't slowing down. And there they was pushing. These black boys was pushing this car. And when they took notice that he was not slowing down, they said, we better get out. We better get off of this road. And so they, they got away from this truck, this car, and they got out to the side there. And he never did slow down. And he went, boom, right into this car. And do you know what? He was sitting in the truck behind the strength of him with a broken hand. And the undertaker said he did not have a blemish on him. And Brother, Brother Duncan, tonight he quoted the scripture that I had already was going to read. Proverbs 29 and 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Brother quote tonight. We can't say that that man was not treated just. God was long-suffering with that man. I don't know how many times that God dealt with his heart that I don't know nothing about. But two times I know that God dealt with his heart. All right. Two times I know. Because I remember very well that Daddy was preaching about Samson. 
preaching about Santa. I'll never forget it. On the 100 highway, he was preaching. And this man, I'll never forget, was holding that pencil. He was holding it. But the Bible said, He that being often reproved, hardened his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. That man didn't have time to pray. He couldn't pray. He couldn't do nothing. There was no remedy for that man. Right, right. No remedy. But God had reproved him. God had dealt with him. He knocked at his heart's door. But you know what happened? He went too far in the path of sin. He went too far and he stayed too long. He could have come to God there when he was holding those people. He could have turned those people loose and he could have fell at an altar and repented of his sin. Then when the little girl come to him and formed that little grave in the sawdust and she marked it off. That's another time that all he had done was just fell off of his feet right there in the sawdust. But he went too far. He went too far. Folks, it's going to pay to stay with God. Praise the Lord. Listen, I believe God is a merciful God. I believe He is just. I believe if, that He does people right. He really does. But people that don't see the call of God and the time that He recruits and they cast that aside. They're just staying too long. They're just going too far. And it won't work, folks. It won't work. And I'm so happy to know that I have the fear of the Lord. Because after all these years of serving the Lord, wouldn't the devil be glad for me to turn loose? Turn loose. Turn loose. But listen, I fear God. Because I know that the devil would be just lurking right. and waiting to do me harm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Praise God. Right. But listen, I'm glad that I believe our God is a merciful God and that He will do you right. Praise the Lord. So if we'll stand tonight, and I don't know what you got out of this, but I feel like it. I've delivered my soul. Even though there may not be a lot of sinners here, I believe that I can give you what the Lord laid on my heart. And I hope that you will take this and not forget it. Praise the Lord. Because everybody that goes away from God, there's not too many that get back where they really need to get. Right. And here is the whole truth about it. People that do come to God after they have gone out, let me tell you this. You've got to get a deeper experience because you know where that you got to the other time. You know where you got to. And you know where you fell from. And you've got to get enough down here at the feet of Jesus to take you past that place where you fell from. Or you might not. That's right. That's right. Because the devil knows how far you go. He knows how far you went. And that's the reason a lot of people is in and out and in and out. And people that's in and out are not, not getting in. That's right. Now you can just mark that down. That people that's in and out are not getting in. And the devil knows how far you go. And he'll try to make you, when you get to that place, he'll, he'll try to make you slide right back down. Now, you remember the other time. You remember the other time. I got you, and I'll get you again. Just like when I was driving that old $300 school bus. We had to get enough speed down here at the bottom that we could make it all the way up that hill. <laughs> So listen, that old bus had to go over the hill. 
it was a $300 one, but if we got enough speed down here at the bottom, and everything wired on it, and everything is shaking as it went, <laughs> I'll tell you, if we got enough speed and power down here at the bottom, before we ever got to that hill, did you know that hill never stopped us? That's right. We'd go plumb over that place. All right. And, and when we learned where the hill was, I want you to know we give it to Jesus. <laughs> My daughter-in-law, Sister Ruth, she drove it some, and I drove it some. And I want you to know, we would give it. We'd give it the gas. And I want you to know, there are very few hills we change oh, here. Right. We meant that thing to get us over. And that is the way it's going to have to be in this last day that we're living in. Oh, right. we got to have enough juice oh. to take us all the way over. Amen. Because the devil wants you to stall on the hill. He wants you to stall and come back and back down. Like your daddy took me to that hill to learn to drive. You know? And here I didn't know how to drive the thing, getting the dog back down there. Listen. But listen, God wants us to go plumb on over. He wants us to. He wants us to. He wants us to. More than you want to. God wants us to make it all the way over the hill. And I believe we can do it. Amen. I don't believe there's nothing that can stop them. Right. It might hinder us a little while. But listen, I'll tell you what. I believe that we can make it all the way. Praise God. Yeah. While Daddy sent me in the snow. You know, we live not too far from the highway. And when the Fry Girls was over there in the, in the country on this bad, bad place, well, uh, Daddy sent me over there one Sunday morning to get them, and snow was everywhere. Snow was everywhere. And I said, Daddy, do you think that I can get over there where they live? And he said, yeah. He said, I see cars going on the highway. That's what he told me. And yeah, I looked out the window, and I saw